Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We are just grateful for open heavens the Lord has granted in this course, Understanding the End Times, and we are in the uh, 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 a book within the book, a sub book, which is the things to come, what next, and by the grace of the Lord, under the things to come, we've looked at the fact of the end time generation, the mystery of lawlessness, the great fallen away. Number two is going to be the event that has been spoken about in First Thessalonians chapter four. From verse thirteen and First Thessalonians chapter, I mean First Corinthians chapter fifteen, from verse fifty to fifty-five, the first resurrection as event number two, and in those same scriptures, the third scripture, the third event is the rapture, the rapture of saints. And we've told you that we need to avoid all these debates whether it's pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation rapture. Those debates are unnecessary. Satan uses it to tear Christians apart and they get on fighting one another and miss the main issue, which is every believer should live as if the day your life is the last one. As a matter of fact, we should live as strangers and pilgrims, ever ready, coming to that place where we are sharp in the spirit for the Lord, waiting for him, watching for him, occupying and being involved in what he asks us to be involved with, when you live that way, whether it's pre, mid, or post, it doesn't matter. The point is that at the sound of the trumpet, you are going to make it. And so that being this case, the Lord wants us to know that you've got to discern scripture properly. For instance, Matthew chapter 24 to 3, when the disciples asked Yeshua a question, it wasn't just one question. He says, and he, he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came up to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? What he was just telling them about, not one stone being upon the other, the temple will be knocked down, will be broken down. When shall these things be? And he gave them answers from that place, from verse 4 going down. The second question is, what shall be the sign of thy coming? Different from what shall be, where shall these things be? The temple that will be destroyed in AD 70. That's a mistake. The pre terrorists with their chief apostle in Chicago, the mistake they make is to say that Jesus came in AD 70. Because they read the Bible without understanding the framework. Tell us, where shall these things be? Two, what shall be the sign of thy coming? And three, and of the end of the world. And brothers and sisters, Matthew 24 deals with these three things. So why is it important? We need to be diligent to understand issues so that we are not going to be caught up of God. That's why we are doing a third lesson on the rapture so that we can make sure that everything that we need to know, at least as much as possible, we know them and nothing skips us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Thank you for the opportunity to receive this word. Just have your way and speak to our hearts and grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I would like to remind you something important that we have emphasized in the course of this teaching. And it's something that is so clear with scripture. The Lord has not appointed his remnant to, you know, to rot. He has not appointed those he saved with the blood of Yeshua. From the rot to come, when Yeshua took the rot of the Father upon himself on the cross, he has not appointed that, that those same people who he has saved, you and I, then will necessarily not go to suffer damnation. No, the church is about deliverance from that damnation. So who qualifies for the rapture is a valid question to ask. And the reality is this. Every true believer, redeemed by the blood, is qualified for the rapture. As long as that one is, there's the person or persons are not subsisting in any sin. There's no sin that is unrepentant of in the life of the believer. The reason is that the seal of Holy Spirit will receive the day we're born again by the Spirit. That seal is 
a, a, a mark of divine ownership. Second Corinthians 1 22, who also has sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 1 13, in whom you also trusted after you had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4 30, and grieve not the Spirit of the Lord. Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the door of redemption. He sealed us unto the door of redemption. The day of the trumpet is a day of ultimate redemption. Brothers and sisters, that's why it's important to know that people who are interested in knowing how will it be simple. The Bible has said in First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 15 to 17, and 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54 is going to be the swift moment of time. Before you blink an eyelid, the rapture has happened. There will be no time to prepare. There will be no time to go and repent of this or that. No. There will be no time for such things. Unfortunately, the vast majority of professing Christians are ignorant of these truths. And worse still, Many who claim they are born again, they are not genuinely saved. According to the scriptures, they, they, they have not experienced regeneration with evidence of a changed life. And they are just being inducted into denominational Christianity. That opinion, that opinion, that one that glorifies poverty, that one that glorifies wealth, that one that glorifies faith, that one that glorifies breakthrough or healing or whatever. People are being, you know, asked to respond to these needs of man and they are not getting saved in a holistic sense. That's why Second Timothy 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of Elohim stands sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that name the name of Yeshua depart from iniquity. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Elohim shall abide forever. So the day of the Lord, which is what the rapture is, it shall be a day of surprises. And only those who are genuinely in him, whose names are in the Lamb's book of life as a result of truly repenting of their sins, will make it. So now let's, let's look at, let's break this down now. Categories of humans for the rapture. In the first place, the rapture is not for unbelievers. Anyone who didn't place faith in Yeshua is not going to make it a rapture. We just see people going up. All these people who are despising him now, despising the gospel, based on religious walls and ideological walls they've constructed, they are just going to see this happen. They can't participate of it. But then, we need to know that in the church of Yeshua, in the church as known by people, number one, those who are in the church and are genuinely regenerated, they receive salvation by grace through faith. The Holy Spirit did a work that turned their life around according to John 3, 3 to 9 and 3, 6 to 16. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and verse 21, Romans 10, 5 to 13, Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. Those who are genuinely regenerated, they will make it to the rapture. Two, those who hold the righteousness and grace they received as a gift in Yeshua, they hold it seriously and through embrace of discipleship, the process of enthroning Yeshua into their heart to rule and reign over their lives and it affects their attitudes, their thoughts, their words, everything they do, their actions and reactions. You know what? They will make it. Three, believers who are watchful, designing by the Spirit the times and we are in and how to respond, they will make it. You find that in first. Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 to 11. 4. Saints who do not allow sin or wits, which is 
unprofitable habits or lifestyles to take their eyes off the sign of Yeshua. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse from verse 1, wherefore, see, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, every habit, every tradition, every lifestyle that is not conducive to our journey to eternity and the sin which does so easily beset us. That particular sin the believer is constantly falling into and repenting of, confessing. That particular sin, there is a time a believer should be able to have the mastery over because sin is not meant to have dominion over Elohim's people. So, those who would not allow sin or wait to take their eyes off Yeshua, they're going to make it. Number five, saints whose hands are on the plow of kingdom service. And they are productively engaged in sin according to the divine pattern. You know the divine pattern? Paul plants, Apollos waters, Elohim gives the increase. So there is a part you can play in any move of Elohim. There is a part you are part of. Take your part. It doesn't matter even if it's to clean the bathrooms, even if it's to sweep the floor, even if it means prayer, intercession, if it means giving financially, if it means giving materially, if it means just, a, you know, the word of the Lord that comes and you take it and multiply it, whether it's in the church where you are or a network you are part of, you take your part, your hands on the plow, and you do not look back. Listen to this. The end of the age, a lot of people make a mistake of thinking that, well, since it's coming, let's fold our hands, every shooting star, uh, that's Jesus is coming, that's the sign. No. Those who are going to make it to the end are going to be engaged. They are using their gifts, their calling, their talents, their abilities to serve the Lord with everything in them. And he will meet you in the midst of doing service. The work the Lord gives to you, he said in Luke 19, 11 to 13 or 13, says, Occupy till I come. You take your part in what the Lord is doing. Everybody has a part in everything. And you know what? Discover your part, play your part, and it shall be well with you. So it's very important to understand that the absolute necessary truth is to know what the rapture is, the catching away, as we said. The Greek word is hapazo. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but it describes something in the Bible that is the swift, sudden taking away of saints. Nobody can take away 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Nobody can take away 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You can't take them away. They are there in the scripture. Now, there are seven postulations which apply to the issue of, of rapture, every Christian must know. Number one, saints need to know that the word is clear that those who abide in Yeshua and allow his words to abide in them have a blessed hope. Two, the blessed, that blessed hope is that the seal of redemption, which is the Holy Spirit, will one day quicken the believer to a changed life from mortality to immortality in a split moment of time. The dead in Yeshua will rise forth. Those who are alive will be caught up, which is what the word rapture means. Rapture means catch up. Three, saints who see and experience heaven. It's been talked about. Yeshua said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I'll come and take you. A day will come. Believers who are dead in Yeshua will be taken up, changed in a moment. Those who are alive will be taken up, changed in a moment. And they will all meet him, not just to go to the judgment seat of Christ, but also to experience this heaven spoken about. Unfortunately, religion presented it as eternity. That's not the heaven as it is now. We are going to experience it probably for about seven years before the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we come down with Yeshua by the grace of the Lord. Come down with Yeshua to vanquish the armies of the Antichrist, fulfill Psalm 2. And then one angel will bind Satan, cast him into the bottomless pit, seal him there, so that Yeshua will restore the kingdom that Adam and Eve lost. For a thousand years, he will rule and reign, and not only will he rule and reign, we will rule and reign with him, all who overcame. So it's something to know that heaven will be experienced, and the way to experience it is not by flesh and blood, but by the change of our nature. 
our fleshly nature which is subject to corruption and death will be given way, will receive a new nature that is imperishable. Now let's say, this is this leads to number four postulation. Any believer can stumble into any category of sin, sin of thought, word, or deed, sin of action, sin of reaction. There's any believer out of presumptuousness or carelessness, somebody can fall victim of Satan manipulation or seduction by a man or a woman or you know be provoked by people and you get offended listen to this and this is where to miss the rapture would be a terrible thing for any believer anyone can have these issues and stumble what the Lord has said is that anybody who is alive in the spirit the moment you stumble you don't go about puffing up and doing as if it doesn't matter. No, if you're alive, the evidence will be in your spirit, man. Your conscience will be convicted. Our conscience will be convicted over that wrong speech, over that wrong action, over that act, whatever it is, and we fall into the hand of the Lord. Let's not behave like Adam who run away from the Lord. No, we take ourselves, cast ourselves upon the Lord, in genuine repentance, brokenness, once you do that, the power of the blood is activated. Why is it important? Listen, a culture of repentance, genuine repentance not to be repented of, is a culture of staying ready for the rapture. Because the sound of the trumpet, there won't be any split moment to go and repent of that, apologize to or whatever. Whatever you need to do, it is at the moment anything happens. And if one lives that way, you have nothing to fear because at the time of the rapture, it doesn't matter whatever you had done in the past, as long as you repented, the blood has blotted them, blotted them out. They will stand against you. So the person who has everything to fear is those persons who have bought into the lie that once you're a believer, you don't need to repent of anything. God doesn't impute any sin to you. So people live anyhow, they accumulate sin, not repented of. No. The other thing you need to learn is the ability to forgive people easily without holding up. Don't let your anger go to the evening. And the third one is to be able to also, you know, get to understand that you if you offend people easily make up with them if they refuse to take it that's their business then you do your bit why are we saying this there's no reason for anyone who is alive in the spirit to be fearful about the rapture the rapture is the end of our faith the lord has given enough room for us to know how to live so that we won't miss this blessed experience and that's why let's not forget that first john chapter 2 says my little children these things write down to you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father yeshua the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but for the sins of the whole world any time anything you said something you shouldn't say it's not true repent and if you told it to people, call them and say, please, I'm so sorry. That answer I gave you was not correct. Number five, we need to know that saints who serve faithfully occupying till the Lord returns will rule and reign on this planet with him. We also emphasize it. Romans 8, 17, and if children then heirs, heirs of Elohim, and joined heirs with Yeshua, if so be that we suffer with him, we'll be glorified together. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. So those who are right now, you are suffering for his name's sake, you are taking all kinds of heat, and people are saying all kinds of things about you because of faith in him, know this for sure. A day will come, you are going to reign. Somebody is going to reign over the area called America today, Great Britain called today, the countries of the world today, people are going to be posted. The states of the various nations, people are going to be posted. The communities, the, the local governments, the, 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 the various government levels, counties and, and, uh, and uh, cities, people are going to rule over them. And men and brethren, that leads me to uh, the, the, the 16, the Lord has ordained that no saint should be self-sufficient 
and live in isolation. Those who allow Holy Spirit to lead them to connect with kingdom communities where the brethren encourage and challenge and comfort one another, they will need each other to make it to the end. First Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18 and First Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11, they end with these verses, wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And Hebrews 10, 19 to 25 makes the case that we are meant to be part of kingdom communities. There must be a group of saints where you can fit in, where you find acceptance, love, where you can flourish in your gift and calling, and that is the way God has ordained it to be. So number seven, in effect, saints need to know that there is more to life than the present sin racked trouble-filled one we see. We therefore cannot live here on earth focusing on material things of the day that will pass away. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Yeshua HaMashiach, we of all men most miserable. Matthew 16, 26 says, For what is a man profited if shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? These imparities are very important to bear in mind when we are considering the issue of the rapture. So, is it possible, therefore, that some believers will make will miss the rapture? The answer is yes. As a matter of fact, what the Lord has shown me over the years, I believe, looking after being in His presence, studying the Word, I believe this to be true. More than an average number of believers today are going to miss it, the rapture. That doesn't mean they will now go into perdition and be lost forever. No. More than half, most likely, are going to miss the rapture, but they will make it into eternity. That's why if you miss the rapture, don't commit suicide. Don't go and kill yourself. There's an opportunity for you. If for any reason you miss rapture, remember the wise and foolish virgins. They were all virgins. They were all righteous, but the other ones took extra oil. The other ones didn't take. So they were careless. That's how they missed it and they entered. Listen, majority of believers may miss the rapture, and if they take heed to the words that are being spoken, they may still gain entrance into eternal life. How would it be? Let, let's just go into the show you the believers who miss the rapture so that you can know and know what to do. One, believers who live in sin as a way of life or a lifestyle, they stand the risk of missing the rapture. That's clear. The range of exclusion clauses in the Bible are too great to ignore. Matthew 7, 13 to 21 ends with, not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but those who are will of the Father in heaven, those who build their house on rock, will stand on sand. It will be taken away. Galatians chapter 5, 14 to 21, the works of the flesh. All those things listed, adultery, fornication, every one of them, hatred, animosity, all of them will deny one day rapture. First Corinthians chapter 6, 9 to 10, the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom. 15 to 20, sins of the flesh, immorality, adultery, involving married people, you know, fornication involving single people, but not only that, things like uh, 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 pornography has become addictive to, even people say they are believers, born again, even having the spirit of Lord in them, they love to watch what is pornographic, and they are not revolts, they enjoy it, and so many other things lost in the heart, lost, that nobody sees, but the Lord sees it, of course, at the sound of the trumpet, lost to prevent somebody from making it. Brothers and sisters, they look at places like Ephesians 5, 3 to 7, about fornication and, you know, all of filthiness, that nobody who is in such will inherit the kingdom. Revelation 21, 8 and 27, Revelation 22, 11, 15, 18 and 19. Any believer living in sin will miss the rapture. No two ways about that. Number two, believers who are not watchful and prayerful, like the foolish veggies. Others who go in and they find the door shut. 
And that is why, men and brethren, we need to say this right now. If anybody miss rapture, all you need to do is to know that the mark of the beast is coming. Anybody who takes the mark of the beast according to Revelation 14 will be lost forever. So make up your mind. No question about that. You embrace martyrdom. You are slaughtered. You are killed brutally or set on fire for the sake of the faith. You refuse to renounce Yeshua. You refuse to take the mark of the beast, the number of the beast or the name of beast. If you do that immediately, one is killed. You make it immediately, automatically. It's just there clearly. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 15 and, and Revelation 20, they are there in scripture, those who were killed for their faith, who refused to take the mark of the beast. So even though people, a lot of believers who miss the rapture, a good number of believers, a great company are going to make it by martyrdom. And that's why Jeremiah asked the question, if you run with footmen, they weary you. What about running with horsemen? So why should one, now that we have all this liberty, you can worship the Lord and nobody can harass you, and then you now wait for the time when a, a knife is put at your neck to renounce Yeshua before. You say, no, I won't renounce him. They sl slit your throat. Why do you have to wait for that? Number three, those who are caught up in a lifestyle of lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, Fostered by the utilitarian gospel. There's this gospel of false prosperity and gospel that has made Elohim to exist to meet our needs. It's no longer for us to worship him, to have a relationship where we worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter whether we have material or not, material things and all those things. Now this utilitarian gospel is all over the world. People are going to particular men of God because they will make sure you get what you want to make sure you've gotten the European dream, the, the English dream, the American dream, the Japanese dream, the African dream. And people are in church not for worship, not for worship Elohim in spirit and in truth, but the real motive is what they will get from Elohim. The utilitarian gospel will not prepare those who are adherents to make the rapture. Many of them, their eyes will be opened only after the rapture. I told you something about one of the largest churches in Africa, one of the largest, and the deputy to the visionary was speaking on camera. He said, some people say, oh, we, uh, we don't preach about uh, heaven and hell and, you know, rapture and all those things that I, I'm not, I don't have the exact words, but that's just what he means. The reason is, it's not that we do not know those things or believe in them, it's just that it's not what God gave to our man of God. What he gave to him is deliverance, a, a, a breakthrough, financial breakthrough, you know, prosperity, things like that, and healing. Seriously? You see how deception can happen? And somebody believes that the Lord gave you only a part of the gospel to preach, the one that will prepare the people for eternity, he didn't give it to you. That means the whole people who believe such a man will miss the rapture only to their eyes to be opened. That money is not all there is to get. Position, title, power, breakthrough is not all there is to get. And that's why they, that's where they may now embrace the truth. But then the rapture has happened. Brothers and sisters, number four, therefore, anyone caught up with the pseudo-kingdom gospel, which denies Yeshua's divinity. You can't believe it. How many people? Spirit field. They believe they lie, a man blew. Sometime in the past, that preach Jesus, preach the kingdom, not Jesus. Oh, what is important is the kingdom, the strength of the kingdom, the power of the kingdom, the glory of the kingdom, and not Jesus. That that's why we have not taken over the world seriously to preach the kingdom and not the king. Any kingdom, any such kingdom message, is pseudo kingdom, is not real. It's not real. And anybody who believes in it will not make the rapture because Yeshua is calling those who believe in him to come up to meet him. And so, not believing his divinity, of course, if he's a mere man, if he's a mere prophet, if he's a mere agent of the Lord, he will lack the power of divinity to save one to the uttermost. And so, brothers and sisters, it's so important that I know. Numbers 5, those who are called 
they had the call, they received the call, their hand was on the plow, but they got distracted and they looked back and they left the plow. Luke 9.61, another said, Lo, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my father's house. Yeshua answered and said unto him, No man, having put his hand on the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. This is serious. Anyone, the Lord has called you, you knew it, you were stirred up, you said it, you even spoke about it, you wrote about it on social media, then you got on to do, connect with that purpose of the Lord, then somehow certain things came, distractions came, you're now there. Where are you now? You're no longer there, you're no longer fervent, you're no longer engaged. That's a dangerous sign. Number six, when scripture is diligently compared with scripture, the manifestation of the mystery of the Protestant vision, version of mystery Babylon is going to prevent people from the rapture. What do we mean? When people in the name of Christ, their heart departs from him, goes into partisan politics. That's their life. Morning, afternoon, night. That's their life. Who win the presidential election? Who win this? And they are also caught up in hating other people, speaking evil over other people, championing, campaigning. The same person who cannot stand for Yeshua in his neighborhood, in his school district, will now, because of the human being, will take yard signs all over proclaiming that person who is his own, who her own Messiah, unknown to him in the school district, will make noise, will attend rallies, even if the rally is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. will go, but will never go to a prayer meeting. Why? The spirit of partisan politics is going to take the heart of many people away from consciousness of the rapture. And as I said, hear me, Christian religionists, are going to play a major role in the manifestation of the Antichrist. He's going to come as a friend of the church. He's going to come as a friend of Israel. And Christians will walk their head off to usher him in. And they won't know who he is until the day he will manifest. But then it's too late and they will have missed the rapture. Men and brethren, number seven, those who doubt, with no faith, are fearful and unbelieving. No matter what you tell them, it doesn't get in. It doesn't get in. It doesn't sink in. Their hearts are full of fear, worry, anxiety. Talk about the rapture, they're afraid. They're afraid, oh, that's my house. Oh, I've not yet married. I've not yet had a, I've not yet had a, 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 a baby. Um, oh, will Jesus wait a little bit? Once those kind of things, is a negative sign. Brothers and sisters, by way of assignment, one, what scriptures signify that the rapture will take place? Two, mention five out of the seven postulations. Three, mention three qualities of saints who will make the qualify for the rapture. And four, mention three qualities of church folks who will miss the rapture. Please share the video and let's continue. Please keep us in prayer. We are going to very serious angles. By the time we finish the rapture, we'll talk about the Antichrist. The Lord is going to break down in high definition certain things that will open the mind of anybody who is open to be empowered with truth. So that we're going to pray now and make a short announcement. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, is no one like you. We bless you. We worship you. Thank you for bringing these revelations, breaking them down for us. Help us not to be careless. Help us to be diligent. Help us to truly mind what we think, say, and do, and give you right away by your Spirit to uphold us from falling. For so you have promised us. For you say you have made a way we have escaped for your people. Lord, I pray that nobody hearing these things will still miss it. Thank you, Father, for we know you've done it. In Yeshua Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day. 
by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.